Good evening. Hello. Cell phones? Uh, just a reminder to everyone in the room to, to turn off your cell phones, please. Do you have any of these suspended? Um, yes. And a uh, strange face here. Um, I'm serving in the position of the, of the president of council because the president is ill tonight. Um, the next senior person who would normally sit in here is Nancy Bain is in Pittsburgh uh, babysitting for her new grandbaby. She's thrilled about that. And um, so here I am. Um, it's October 5th, about 7.30, and we will begin a regular session of Athens City Council. Uh, first of all, we do have a quorum. Um, I'm acting president, but I will vote as a, uh, a member of council on any issues that require a vote, so all action can proceed as, uh, as normal. Uh, secondly, we have a disposition of two sets of minutes. One is the special session that was held on September 4th, 2009, and September 14th, 2009, I'm sorry, and the regular session, which was held September 21st, 2009. Do I have a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, communications. I have um, two communications. Uh, first of all, City Council has received a request for a transfer of a liquor permit. Um, actually, it's a transfer of ownership um, from CVS Pharmacy on East on Court Street, South Court Street, uh, which is doing business now as Hook Super X LLC. They're going to be changing their name to Ohio CVS Stores LLC, um, doing business at the same address. If anyone has uh, comments or concerns about this, please see the clerk of council, and um, we will take care of that. Um, also, we'd like to announce a public hearing that will be held in these chambers, city council chambers, on next Monday, October 19th, um, at 7 o'clock. This hearing is to recommend, to consider a recommendation from the Planning Commission to amend the Athens City Zoning Code uh, in the B3 General Business Zones, amending the permitted uses for eating and drinking establishments and to correct some errors in the downtown business zone um, which have been detected in, during the discussion. I said next week. It's actually two weeks from tonight. I'm sorry. It is two weeks. October 19th, 7 o'clock in this, in this room. Uh, our regular session will be that evening at 7.30. Okay. Uh, do we have reports from any other elected officials? Mayor? Um, just uh, two things. One is that uh, the uh, schedule for the leaf collection, the fall leaf collection is, and map is on the city website, so if you want to check that out. Again, we are uh, vacuuming up the leaves for free, and the bags will cost uh, regular yard waste. We're not supplying bags this year either, uh, just to save money. Uh, two, um, uh, I received from uh, Ohio uh, Consumer Council about a public hearing October 7th, 6 p.m., at the Athens Community Center. This is concerning the Verizon slash Frontier uh, transfer, I believe. Um, and again, this came to me uh, a while back, but uh, to reiterate it. So that's this Wednesday coming up. And that's oh, all I really have. Okay. Mayor, I just take this uh, opportunity to say, I called the, um, the city service garage today, mm -hmm. the, the number that's listed in the phone book, and I got the long announcement about leaf pickup and then at the very end of that, it gave me an, another, another number to call. Um, maybe, maybe, we, maybe we should change that around. Okay. okay. I'll get um, on. Auditor Heck? No report. Uh, reports from other council members. Um, to go along with the leave pickup, um, we also, I, I spoke with um, service safety director about having available at the community center um, the availability of buying the permits for um, the bundles of, of sticks and other yard waste because sometimes um, for people it's easier to get to the, the community center and she is setting that up. So it should be 
in the next week or so that availability. I believe there will also be a code or the water public works so. department too. Thank so. you, Member Fall. Any other council members wish to speak? Thank you, sir. Uh, just a brief update on the Hebe sculpture. I uh, have been liaison with a professional from Cincinnati by the name of John Klein, who uh, is the owner of a foundry there and specializes in sculpture, bronze works, and restorations. And he is uh, likely to be visiting Athens in the next week or two. I've been in touch with uh, Public Works Director Andy Stone and Bruce Campatelli as well pertaining to this. As soon as I know more, I'll let everyone know. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have organized a forum on water fluoridation for next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, in this room here. Uh, it's a doctor from uh, New York, Dr. Paul Connett, uh, will be here to speak as an, a, a critic of, of water fluoridation practices. And the ODH uh, declined to send someone to speak as a proponent, but I'm still trying to find someone to, to speak as a proponent. So it'll be 7 p.m. a uh, week from Wednesday. Okay. Moving on, we'll be reading ordinances for second reading. Um, I'll read these ordinances. Normally, there'll be no action taken, but I do believe we have at least one action here. Ordinance 113-09, an ordinance amending ordinance 09309, authorizing the purchase of a new salt truck for the Public Works Department, introduced by Member Nisley. Ordinance 114.09, an ordinance authorizing design and construction of a school travel plan, project two, number 235. Mr. President, I move to amend ordinance 114-09. Second. Okay. okay. And the purpose of amending this, um, this is the Safe Routes to School grant program, and it will provide improvements to our, sc our school um, areas. We're going to reduce the amount of the appropriation for this ordinance by $6,500 because the Athens City School will act as fiscal agent for that portion of the grant. So they will receive that $6,500 directly at the school. Okay. Um, any comments or questions? All those in favor of this, this amendment, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. No opposition. Ordinance 11409 has been amended, so it will move back to first reading. Um, it will have been read for the first time. We'll be back for second reading again next week. Ordinance 11709, an ordinance amending Ordinance 07209, declaring certain vehicles no longer needed for a municipal purpose. Again, Member Nisley. <coughs> Ordinance 11809, an ordinance approving the report of the Assessment Equalization Board with respect to objections concerning the estimated assessments for sidewalk improvements associated with the Carpenter Street project. Ordinance 11909, an ordinance authorizing the service safety director to advertise and accept bids where necessary for energy efficiency improvements. Ordinance 12009, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a solar power purchase agreement, SPPA, and a solar license agreement, SLA, for a, for a photovoltaic solar energy installation to be sited at the Athens Community Center and declaring an emergency. Now we're on to ordinances for first reading. Ordinance 121.09, an ordinance amending the 2009 appropriation ordinance, um, introduced by me from the Finance and Personnel Committee. Uh, we're suggesting that we would amend this ordinance by um, appropriating $6,000 to the Tourism Fund, additional cost um, for Halloween weekend, and adding $20,000 to the Transportation Assistance Fund 214, uh, transaction class 500, these funds to be used to purchase, to, to um, replace a bus engine for one of our buses, 2004 engine. So Mayor Weil, you spoke to that, did you have comment? Um, is it possible to suspend the rules on this so we can get the bus fixed sooner than later? It is possible. Okay, part of the reason for this is um, 
Uh, I guess I should ask for a motion. Or you okay. should ask for a motion. Um, with the mayor's suggestion, I move that we consider Ordinance 12109 under suspension. Second. All those in favor of suspending the rules? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Rules have been suspended. Well, part of the reason is that the bus, uh, to my knowledge, is up at uh, somebody's, you know, mechanic's yard, and I, I suspect eventually they'll get tired of having it sit there waiting for us to say one way or the other and start charging us for um, storage. So to try keeping it cheap, I'm hoping to get this done quicker, as well as the bus back in the system faster. The mayor has supplied us with a reason for suspension um, and asked us to um, approve this ordinance tonight. All those in favor of approving ordinance 12109, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Same sign. Ordinance has been passed um, under suspension of the rules. We'll move on to Ordinance 12209, an ordinance authorizing the service safety director to enter into a contract for construction of the Curtis Street Water System Improvements Project Number 249 and declaring an emergency. Um, do we want to suspend this one too? We're trying to get this. This is one of the standards. I asked packaged. about all this, and they said no. Oh, who, who told you that? <laughs> Um, um, oh, go, ahead. Well, go ahead, sorry. Okay, uh, Mayor, do you want to go ahead and talk about this? Um, again, this is part of the stimulus package for Curtis and Mulligan. If you remember, this is uh, something that has to be uh, put through as fast as possible, I believe. Um, I think we've already got the, the, the bids lined up and ready to go, so uh, if we can get it in before the snow flies, it'd be nice. This is an $800,000 $800, project um, repairing some perennial problems that we have um, in the Mulligan Curtis Street area uh, with uh, sewer lines and water lines. Uh, we have a, a loan from the Ohio Water Development Authority uh, for $480,000 and from the Appalachian Regional Committee, no, I'm sorry, from the stimulus funds, we have a forgivable loan of $320,000 for the total amount of $800,000 and um, the construction is ready to begin or actually has already begun? Um, I haven't been up there, so I assume it hasn't begun yet. I thought I but, would have heard about it, but we um, want to get going. Equipment is moving into the area, mm -hmm. at least, so um, we'd like to um, authorize these funds so that the project can begin. So um, I ask that we suspend the, ru um, suspend the rules on Ordinance 12209. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, the, the rules have been suspended. I, I seconded that. I'm sorry. I went fast. Didn't you? <laughs> okay, the rules have been suspended. Again, the mayor has supplied us with a reason for suspension, uh, for uh, an approval. So we're going to vote on approving this ordinance. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. And so this is passed um, six to zero under suspension of the rules. Okay. Um, ordinance 12309. This is an ordinance authorizing the service safety director to enter into a contract <laughs> to provide maintenance and support for the city's telephone and computer networking systems. Um, this ordinance appropriates a little more than $31,000 to the Internal Service Fund um, and authorizes the Service Safety Director to expend up to seven, about $72,000 for this contract. Um, this is, we have a new tower on the hill overlooking Athens and a new phone system. If anybody has tried to call the city, uh, you know that you get a new a message from anybody you're calling. We have a new phone system, and we need to make a payment on that. So that's the reason for this ordinance. We are not suspending on this. We'll read it again. Okay. <coughs> we move on to ordinance 12409, an ordinance amending ordinance. 11009 declaring a real and present emerge emergency, thus obviating the formal bidding procedure for structural repairs at the Columbus Road fire station introduced by Member Coons. 
Thank you, Mr. Acting President. Um, I move that we consider Ordinance 12409 under suspension of the rules. Second. The reason for this is the urgency of getting the um, structural repairs done for the Columbus Road Fire Station. For the reasons for suspending the rules, all those in favor of suspension of the rules say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay. <coughs> Member Coon. Member Sands, I move to adopt Ordinance 12409. Second. Wait. Second. Okay. Um, the reason for this is that the original ordinance 11009 appropriated $50,000 for the structural repairs at the Columbus Road fire station that has increased now to $150,000 due to um, the floor having to be reinforced. Okay. Mayor Wild. Um, I, as a member of Kuhn mentioned last time, is that it would be nice to have thinking caps of where we can <coughs> put a new fire station. Uh, it always comes down to either floodplain or slip prone. Um, I was at the Ohio Municipal League meeting conference uh, Wednesday and Thursday, and I, I heard through the grapevine that there's another uh, round of grants coming through. I need to check on that, but that means we should put our thinking caps on sooner than later. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, I, that was just one of the many conversations I had that this this would have another round going. I'm sure Chief Trops will tell us once I hear about it, but I was, uh, Member Coon was mentioning last time if we have ideas and suggestions. And I know you went through the search for all the different pieces of land, but it always comes down to where we can put them. That, that makes it strategic, uh, you know, usefulness of it. Sure. Thank you. Um, I think it's important to realize that um, our, one of our first priorities should be the safety of our workers and employees. And right now, um, with the, the change in the different types of um, equipment that we have, the fire station that has been around for several years um, is, is not up to the job. And it should be recognized that we are not going to be buying, you know, building a fire station overnight and that we have to make sure that this fire station remains viable and safe. And so it's unfortunate you know, that this is the kind of a catch-22 situation because it would be great to have a fire station built overnight, but that's going to be a process. And so I think we have to support this process and this, this particular ordinance. Otherwise, we could be putting our, our I mean, we don't want to have a crumbling fire station. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? All those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 12409, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Same sign. Okay. The ordinance is approved, six to zero. Okay, we'll move on to Ordinance 12509, um, an ordinance authorizing the adoption of a three-year agreement with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Local 2403, and Ohio Council 8, AFL-CIO, concerning wages and working conditions and declaring an emergency. Um, actually, I'm going to ask uh, Law Director Patrick Lang to speak to this. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. <clears throat> and uh, I apologize. I had hoped to be able to uh, come to Finance Committee last week to explain some of the uh, uh, these next two contracts. Uh, I was out with the flu and am now recovered, but my voice is not all the way recovered, so I do uh, apologize for that. Uh, I am told that I'm no longer contagious, so thank you. everyone up here can, can rest <laughs> easy with that. Um, as everyone is, uh, or certainly everyone on the council is aware, we've been engaged uh, with uh, uh, labor negotiations uh, with two different bargaining units within the city. Uh, both of those units are represented by AFSME, uh, which is the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees. Um, as it just so happens, uh, by coincidence, we uh, finished both of these negotiations at about the same time and uh, entered into, have entered into tentative agreements on both. And I will uh, go through some of the details uh, on, uh, on the first uh, contract here in particular. Um, just to kind of give some people that may not be familiar with the process a little idea of what the structure is, uh, the city at these negotiations is represented by a bargaining team uh, that is appointed by the mayor. And that includes uh, myself and uh, the service safety director, uh, Paula Mosley, and the uh, personnel director, Beverly Henderson. Uh, this is not uh, 
traditionally a, a responsibility of the law director's office per se, but it's something that I volunteer uh, to do. I've got some experience in these areas and certainly been, I've been pleased to serve uh, on the negotiation uh, teams here at the, at the mayor's request. Um, some people that uh, some people sometimes ask what goes on in, in those executive sessions uh, that we have, uh, particularly around contract times. We have them semi-frequently, um, and basically the reason we have those executive sessions where uh, the council meets uh, uh, in private with uh, usually the mayor and the auditor uh, and myself is so that we can go over um, where we are in these contract negotiations, so that I, as a member of the bargaining team, can get my marching orders from the mayor and from council, and then take those to uh, to the bargaining table. And then we have those sessions from time to time so that I can come back and inform council about the status of where we're at in those negotiations. Um, these, uh, both of these contracts which are being introduced uh, tonight, uh, council will have 30 days upon which to act on these contracts or they become automatically accepted uh, if council does not act to, uh, to reject them within that, that time frame. Uh, as is the case with um, what I would argue with just about all contracts, uh, these contracts are, are not perfect. Um, and as with any negotiation, there were things that uh, we wanted that we didn't get, uh, and there were things that the union wanted that they didn't get. Uh, but uh, these contracts are fair uh, to both the city and to the union. And uh, in addition to uh, continuing uh, to guarantee good working conditions, I believe that these contracts uh, also guarantee an honest day's pay for an honest day's work, all while understanding that now, in this economic environment uh, more than ever, that it is very important that uh, members of this council and members of the city administration are good stewards of the taxpayer dollar. Um, the first contract that's up, uh, the local 2403, uh, these are um, basically the city service employees. These are the hardworking women and men in the city that are often overlooked, uh, but who do the work that really makes this city uh, able to meet its most basic functions uh, as government. Uh, these, uh, this unit includes, among other employees, um, our city uh, electricians, mechanics, laborers, custodians. Uh, these are the people that work uh, and staff the water plants and who enforce our parking laws, and uh, these really are the, the people that make our city work. Negotiations with this unit uh, went uh, very smoothly. We reached agreement uh, reasonably quickly. I think this was for two reasons. I think, number one, that uh, this contract is what uh, is referred to as a mature contract. This is a, 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 one of the older bargaining units within the city, and so most of the language has been carried over from contract to contract, and so there weren't a great deal of, of new issues to, uh, to discuss. And I think the second reason that uh, these were able to go so smoothly is because uh, all parties came to the table in a spirit of, of fairness and, uh, and wanting to, to really get a deal done. To the union's great credit, uh, they understand the economic times that we are operating in. Uh, to give you some uh, idea of uh, previous contract, the contract that, uh, that has recently expired that they were operating under uh, granted them, a, over the three-year life of the contract, a, a three consecutive 4% raises, so 4%, 4%, 4%. And uh, that was done in 2006, which was a very different economic time. And uh, they understood, again, to their credit, that, uh, that we were not in a position to be able to, to give those kinds of, uh, of raises in this economic climate. So on the wages issue, the agreement that we were able to, uh, to reach was that uh, over the three-year life of the contract, uh, raises of 3%, 2.5%, and 2.5%. And um, on uh, the issues of insurance, um, there were uh, some changes um, that uh, in both uh, this, this increases uh, insurance premiums to the members of this bargaining unit and also increases uh, the, the amount of copays that the individual members will have to pay for prescription drugs. Um, and again, that's just a reflection of the, uh, the reality, the economic reality uh, that we're operating under today. Uh, the other economic uh, issue with this contract uh, involved uh, uniform allowances in which uh, at, uh, one of the city's proposals which we got into the contract was to, uh, to institute a uniform allowance uh, cap of $500, uh, basically a $500 uniform credit for uh, replacement uh, items. This does not include safety items, uh, but uh, we uh, ran the numbers and with the help of our uh, city auditor, Kathy Hecht, who is uh, very instrumental in, in helping us with both of these contracts, uh, we were able to project a, a cost savings to the city of several thousand dollars uh, over the life of this contract as a result of, uh, of the clothing allowance. And so that's kind of the nuts and bolts on, uh, on that contract. And uh, again, we have 30, uh, council has 30 days of, uh, in which to act. And um, certainly um, uh, take your time and read the contracts. And uh, at the second and third readings, uh, I'll be happy to, to answer any questions at that point. Council members have any questions or concerns at this moment? Mayor, auditor. 
Maybe. I'd like to thank the negotiating team. They worked pretty hard on it. I thank mean, you. It's, it's, it was it was quick, but it was a lot of work. So thanks. Negotiating team from both sides. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll move on to um, Ordinance 12609, an ordinance authorizing the adoption of a three-year agreement with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal, Municipal Employees, Local 2403, parentheses 2, and Ohio Council 8, AFL-CIO, concerning wages and working conditions and declaring an emergency. No. <laughs> Director Lang. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, the second uh, contract is a little bit of a, a different kettle of fish um, than the, the one that I had just discussed. Uh, the employees of the Code Enforcement Office had voted earlier this year uh, to unionize, and uh, we've been engaged in uh, what I can only describe as a protracted negotiation over the last several months, uh, which is not necessarily to, uh, unexpected because this u this unit and this contract is the opposite of the mature contract that we have with the other unit. It's a brand new contract. Everything's on the table, and so there are a lot more issues to, uh, to deal with. As you may recall, several weeks ago, um, we had uh, reached impasse on an issue involving the hours of work uh, that the office uh, would be open. And we had gone to a, pr a process called fact-finding with that, which uh, appropriately <laughs> enough uh, is uh, presided over by what's called a fact-finder. And that person's job is to uh, kind of look at all the facts and to make a recommendation to both sides uh, as to uh, what they think is a fair resolution. The fact finder's report on the issue of hours had recommended uh, that we continue to maintain the hours which are in place now, uh, which is 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock with a one hour paid lunch. Um, the city council uh, voted unanimously to reject that report and we returned to the bargaining table on that issue. Uh, finally, as uh, again is so often the case in negotiations, we settled on a resolution that uh, frankly pleased neither side, uh, but that both sides could, uh, could live with. And we agreed that the office would be open from uh, the hours of 7.30 a.m. to 4 o'clock with a half-hour unpaid lunch break. Um, on the other issues which we had been able to come to agreement on prior to reaching impasse on the, the other agreement, uh, on the wages issue, um, we had to, this was somewhat of a challenge because we had to create a new wage structure out of whole cloth, basically. Uh, in the city's, bar with the city's uh, various bargaining units, uh, those employees are in what's called a step system. So usually five different uh, steps, uh, which depending on seniority, uh, you know, the longer uh, someone works, they move up into higher steps. Uh, and this obviously was a structure that did not exist previously for these five employees in the code office. And so we were able to create, um, and this frankly gets pretty complicated, but the bottom line on this is that two of the five employees will receive uh, an immediate raise, uh, the two newer employees. Um, the, the five steps, uh, the beginning wage uh, is increased to $16.53 an hour and will cap out, uh, so the highest step will cap out at $18.27 an hour. Now that high end uh, is actually more than three of the employees in the code office are currently making it. So, uh, uh, the, the three, uh, the, to those three employees to which that applies, they will receive a premium basically on top of this last step so that they will not receive a pay cut uh, because otherwise this would be a reduction in pay for them. The important thing for, from council's perspective that I would point out is that while in the short term uh, this uh, doesn't provide two employees with a raise, that over the uh, long term, because we've capped, we've, we've put a cap on, on, uh, on the fifth step, uh, that this will actually save money for the city uh, over the long term. Um, over the three-year life of the contract, uh, instead of going with a percentage, uh, we went with a flat uh, uh, monetary uh, raise of 40 cents uh, for each year of the contract. And that, to give you some idea, that works out to roughly a 2% to 2.5% raise, uh, depending on how much someone is making, obviously. Uh, the more you make, then the, the smaller percentage that 40 cents uh, makes up. Uh, on the insurance issue, uh, the insurance uh, agreement is the same as what uh, was in the 2403 contract, which I previously discussed. And uh, really the only other, uh, outs the other issue on this is um, the question of the effective date of the contract. And in those uh, copies of the contract which have been provided to council, we used the date of the tentative agreement, uh, which was two weeks ago, as the effective date. Um, however, I, I would um, let's say that that could be subject to, uh, because it's not, since this is a, again, it's a different contract, it's a brand new contract, um, that, I, that the contract is actually not effective until council would vote to make it effective. And so I would just would, would caution you that some of the, the individual dates in the the contract may change. That's a clerical issue that wouldn't require any further act of council, but I did want to, to bring it to council's attention. 
Thank you, Lord Director Lang. Thank you. Um, Council members, any comments or questions at this point? Again, we will have read this two more times um, before we take any action. If we do, um, Auditor, Mayor, any comments at this time? Okay, thank you. Um, next on our um, agenda um, is a, the time for announcements and other business. I have one announcement at this time. Um, actually, I'm going to ask Council to uh, vote on one more thing. Uh, we need to appoint a voting delegate to the National League of Cities Convention, uh, which will occur in November of 2009. And our suggestion is that we appoint Law Director Lang um, as our voting delegate, with um, Mayor Weil as the alternate voting delegate. So I move that we make this appointment. Second. Any questions or concerns about this? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Um, any other announcements and other business at this point? How about scheduling committee meetings? Transportation. Transportation meeting? Development. Development meeting. Um, I'm sure we'll have something with finance and personnel also. Uh, anything else? This is for a week from tonight. Actually, Mr. President, I would just ask that since uh, on the contracts issue, since council would have to act within 30 days, and I, I don't, it doesn't really matter to me how council would go about it, but uh, or, uh, I guess a special session for the second reading. If we don't have a special session, then we would actually end up on the third reading would take us outside that 30-day window. So okay. um, I'm indifferent as to whether that's next week or whether it would be a special. Just... Is there something else happening Didn't we just announce? Um, a hearing at 7 o'clock? Yeah, that's the 19th. That's, that's the 19th? So, okay, let's do it next week. Okay. So we'll have a special session just to read these. Um, Can I ask that we get a vote on having a special session as well? Uh, yeah. I'm, I should say we are, I move that we um, have a special session on the agenda for next uh, next week. Second. 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 <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? So the special session is scheduled um, for next Monday night prior to um, our committee meetings. Is that OK? OK. Um, any other announcements, business? No? Now we have opportunity for citizens to speak on legislative items and city services not covered on the agenda. If you come up, we do ask that you uh, state your name and give us your address, and then you have three minutes to speak to us. Please. Um, we're not quite sure how this works. <laughs> Just. Um, yes. You need to come up to the podium. And again, state your name and your address. My name is Andrea DeMott. I'm at 11 Blick Avenue. Um, this is my neighbor, um, Arfan Ali, from 9 Blick Avenue, or at least that was last week. I'm not quite sure at this point. Um, you, I, I sent a collective email to all council members this morning describing our situation. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to read it yet, but um, basically I wanted to see if I could ask for help um, in the situation that has arisen. Um, Blick Avenue is a very, very short street that's about half a block long, um, but all four of the property owners on the street, um, including Ali and myself, um, received a letter out of the blue in July from the um, Office of Code Enforcement um, informing us that our addresses had been changed. Um, and since then, we have been struggling to um, try to avert this disaster and um, to try to um, see if we could get any help. Um, basically, um, for two reasons. One is that um, the city should not be able to uh, arbitrarily change our addresses without warning us or consulting us. Um, and there really should be some sort of process in this process. Um, 
after these letters arrived, we went and um, spoke to um, John Paskey, the um, code enforcement director. Um, we spoke several times to Ron Lucas, um, assistant service safety director. We spoke to the fire chief. We spoke to Paula Mosley, the service safety director. Um, I spoke to Lisa Eliason um, in the law office. Um, basically, we have just been struggling with this for weeks. Um, is there anything that city council can do to help us? <laughs> Um, at this time, I do have a communication from, from uh, the service safety director um, who points out that Athens City Code 31.01.01 says that it is the duty of the service safety director to issue numbers for buildings um, and that city council is not mentioned in that ordinance. Um, and so that's legally where we stand right now. Are there any... I would just add that that's, uh, I'm not weighing in on whether that's uh, you know, right or wrong, but that is what the code says, is that the, it's an administrative function uh, with the service safety director being the, the ultimate authority on that. Um, and the, um, the, um, the letter goes on to, to uh, say that the reason for this is to be come into compliance with the um, emergency numbering system throughout the city and the county. Etc. So um, I, that's that's the information that has been given to me regarding this. I did receive your email. Yes, thank you. Um, and question: you you said you received a notice some time ago that the addresses had been changed, or would had been changed, and the um, and so your current address is well. <laughs> Depends on who you ask. Um, okay. I'm trying to stick to my old address, however. Um, the old address was? 11. 11, and now? It um, if I go along with this city decision, then it is 23. Oh. Okay. Um. Right now, um, since I have not complied with this satisfactorily, um, my mail is being held. So I don't really have an address at the moment. Thank you. Um, um, again, I, I, I understand that um, the it is within the um, scope of the service safety director's um, uh, position to make this decision. But um, the fact that she can doesn't necessarily mean that she should, especially not without consulting the residents that is going to be affecting before they um, make catastrophic decisions like these? Um, I, let me just say that certainly today was the first time I had heard of this situation, and I think most members of council. And, and so before we make a statement at all, we should probably we'd like to have a little more time, a day or two, to make some inquiries on our own. Certainly. Um, and um, we appreciate you bringing it to us um, we're, with no promises we say we will um, follow up and see what where we are thank you very much thank you anybody else wish to speak this time any other members of the audience wishing to speak on any uh, legislative items or city services hearing none we will move on to adjournment I move that we adjourn this meeting at 10 minutes after 8. All those in favor say aye. aye. Thank you very much.